All right, so this is the video for section 10.2. We're going to learn how to translate and reflect trig graphs. Um, and we're going to be doing this with sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, translating a trig graph means taking that graph and shifting it around the coordinate plane. So maybe it moves up or down. Those are the only ones we're going to do. Or maybe it moves left and right, which you'll do some of that next year. Um, reflecting means uh, taking your trig graph and flipping it over and seeing a mirror image. And we'll see what that looks like on our calculator. Okay, so um, we're familiar with um, y equals a sine bx from section 10.1 and a, sine, a cosine bx. But now we've also got this plus k at the end. That k is a vertical shift. So if I see y equals uh, 5 sine 3x plus 7, I know that my whole graph of y equals sine x is going to move vertically. It's going to move up 7. Or if I see um, you know, 2 cosine 1 half x minus 4, I know that whole graph of 2 cosine 1 half x is going to move down 4. It's a vertical shift. And one of the things that it affects that we're going to need to remember is what's called the midline of the graph which is just a fancy way of saying the line that runs down the middle of cosine and sine, and we'll take a look at that when we do our first example. The other thing that we're going to see in this section is we're going to start seeing values of a that are negative. In the last section, they were all positive. If a is a negative number, then the graph reflects over the midline. So let's see if we can visualize some of this. And to do that, we're going to look at three graphs. We're going to start with one that we might have seen in section 10.1, 3 sine of 2x. We know the amplitude here is 3. We know that the period is going to be 2 pi over b. And in this case, b is 2. So the period is going to be pi. And so um, we're going to take a look at this graph on our calculator. I've already set the window. I've got y equals, let me turn this off so it's not clear. There we go. I've got y equals 3 sine of 2x, and I've already adjusted my window so that it's basically showing from 0 to pi with a little bit of room on each side. Let's take a look at the graph. So here's x equals 0, and we can see the shape we recognize from sine x. It goes up first, and then it goes down, and then here's um, 2 pi. So here's our graph of y equals, uh, or sorry, this is pi because the period is just pi. Here's our graph of y equals 3 sine 2x from x equals 0 to x equals pi. Okay, it looks pretty normal. So let's see what would happen if instead of y equals 3 sine 2x, if a, that number out front, had been negative. We're going to graph y equals negative 3 sine 2x and see how it looks. And I'm going to leave y equals 3 sine 2x here so we can compare the two graphs. Underneath it, I'll graph negative 3 sine of 2x. My blue graph is the original one, and the red graph is going to be the one with a as negative 3. So this is negative 3 sine of 2x. It looks a little bit like DNA, doesn't it? Double helix. The thing I want us to notice is sine x starts by going up, and then it goes down, down, up. That's a pattern we recognize from sine. Up, down, down, up. And that gets us to our start of the game, first quarter, halftime, third quarter, end of the game for sine. But if a is a negative number, that blue graph reflects over the x-axis. And the part that was up here reflects down and is now down here. The part that was down here reflects up and is now up there. And instead of up, down, down, up being the pattern that I recognize for sine x, instead now it starts at 0, 0, just like always, but it goes down, up, up, down. It reflected over the midline. And here the midline is just the middle of the graph because we haven't done any vertical shifts. The midline is 
y equals 0. Okay, I'm going to take off the blue graph so we can just look at the reflection. Here it is. This is y equals negative 3 sine of 2x from x equals 0 to x equals pi. It's just a reflected version of the regular sine graph. Okay, so what is what happens if we also add k plus k? Here I'm adding plus 1, which means the entire graph is going to move up 1. Once again, let's go ahead and leave the, the red one. And in black, we're going to graph negative 3 sine of 2x plus 1. And we're going to see how it looks different. It's the same shape. It's still got that negative out front here. So it's still going down, up, up, down. But everything has been moved up 1. And so the black graph is 1 higher than the red graph. I'm going to take off the red graph now so we can just look at the black graph. And we'll see that instead of starting at 0, 0, it moved up 1. Now it starts at 0, 1. Instead of its minimum point being at first quarter, comma, negative 3, which is what we'd expect from the amplitude, it's at first quarter, comma, negative 2. And instead of its maximum point being at third quarter, comma, 3, which is what we'd expect from the amplitude, it's moved up one. It's at third quarter, comma, 4. Okay? And the graph ends at the end of the game, which is pi, comma, 1, instead of pi, comma, 0. So everything has moved up 1. What do you think the midline of this graph is? The midline is k. And so the midline is 1. Let's graph that so we can see that the middle of the graph is y equals 1. When I plot that midline, and I sort of ignore the x-axis temporarily, and I just think I'm just going to focus on this pink line. One second, I'm making a video. Come back in a few minutes. Sure, grab a book. Um, so um, if you ignore the x-axis and just look at the midline, it looks like a regular sine graph. OK, let's try an example. So we're going to graph one period of the function. We're going to identify the domain, range, and period. And we're going to label our five key points in the case of sine. And for tangent, which we'll do in a second, we're going to label our five key points. But remember, for tangent, two of those five points are asymptotes. The start of the game and the end of the game are asymptotes for tangent. And then we'll label three points in the middle. OK, you know what? Since we just did sine, let's change this to cosine. So the first one we're going to do is y equals negative cosine of x plus 1. Let's start like we always do by figuring out what the period is. b is the coefficient of x. I don't see any number there, which means it's 1. So the period here is just 2 pi over b, 2 pi. That's my period. Which is kind of familiar. That means I get to have my graph go from 0 all the way up to 2 pi. I've got to figure out what half time is. What's halfway between 0 and 2 pi? Pi. I've got to figure out what first quarter is. What's halfway between 0 and pi? If you're not sure, divide that by 2. Pi over 2. And then maybe this is the trickiest one, third quarter. What's halfway between pi and 2 pi? You can either Add these two numbers up and divide by 2 to find the average, or you can count up by the smallest one. So 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 would reduce to pi. That means this is 3 pi over 2. And just to check, if I went one more, it would be 4 pi over 2, which reduced to 2 pi. So I've got my start and half time, first quarter, third quarter. Um, now, a is a negative number here. It's negative 1 instead of positive 1. And I've also got a plus k. I've got plus 1, which means the whole graph is going to move up 1. Let's start by graphing that midline. At y equals 1, that's going to be my midline. I'm going to wish I made that a little bigger, but that's OK. This is kind of like, I'm going to think of this midline like it's the x-axis. I'm going to kind of ignore that line. And I'm going to graph cosine on this midline instead. Now, 
the amplitude is still the absolute value of a. Amplitude is the absolute value of a. In this case, a is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So there's the amplitude. That means I'm going to go up 1 and down 1 from the midline. Um, that's how far up and down the wave will go. Now cosine normally starts above the midline, right? Y equals cosine x normally starts up here and then goes down, down, up, up. But it's been reflected. So instead of starting up here, that maximum point reflects over the midline and it starts down here. And instead of going down, down, up, up, like I normally do for cosine, I'm going to go up, up, down, down. Because of the negative a value, everything is reflected. So instead of going Instead of starting at the top for cosine like I normally do and going down, down, up, up, I'm going to start at the bottom of the amplitude and I'm going to go up, up, down, down. Now let's try to um, draw this. Um, it's so hard, especially since I made it really squished, it's so hard to draw this well. I'll do my best. It helps a little bit if I think of this as like a frowny face above the midline. Aww. And here's a happy face. Aww. But it's only half the happy face. The other half would be over here. Where's the other half? That's oh, pretty good. This is my graph of y equals negative cosine x. The negative reflected it, so it started down here instead of up here. Plus 1. The plus 1 moved the whole thing vertically up. I've got my x-axis labeled. I've got my y-axis labeled. It would be easier for me to see what each of these points is. I've got my midline drawn as a dotted line. Let's make sure I've given all the information I want. Domain. For sine and cosine, domain is so easy. All real numbers. This graph extends forever to the left and the right. There are never any asymptotes or holes. So there's the domain. Let's label the range. This one's a little different with our vertical shift. Because of the vertical shift, the range isn't just negative 1 to 1. The lowest it ever gets is 0. And the highest it gets is 2. And so my range is, you can write it like this, y is between 0 and 2. Or if you'd rather give it an interval notation, y goes from 0 to 2, including 0 and 2, because it does get up to 2 and it does get down to 0. Both of these are perfectly acceptable ways of writing your answer. Let's see, we've got domain, range, period. What would the maximum value of this graph be? The highest it reaches. The maximum value is 2. What's the minimum value it reaches? 0. Um, I've labeled my five key points, and I'm done. OK, let's try one more example, and then we'll be done. We're going to graph y equals negative 2 tangent of x minus 1. And you know we just did plus 1, so I'm going to change this to make it a little bit more exciting. Let's do minus 3. Whew, that is more exciting. OK, remember, tangent has different rules than sine and cosine. The period of sine and cosine is 2 pi over b. The period of tangent is pi over b. b, just like in the last example, is the coefficient of x, and it's just 1. So the period of uh, this function is going to be pi over b, which is just pi. Remember, for tangent, it's a little trickier. I don't just get to start at 0 and go all the way up to pi. I've got to start at 0, and I'm going to go half the period to the right and half the period to the left to get my complete period of y equals tangent x. So if the period is pi, what's half of that? Pi over 2. I'll go to the right pi over 2. I'll go to the left pi over 2. This is my start of the game, end of the game, and half time first quarter and third quarter would be halfway between 0 and pi over 2. So that's half of pi over 2, which is pi over 4. And on the other side, it would be negative pi over 4. Tangent x starts and ends its period with asymptotes. So I'll graph those. Now normally, I would next put the x-intercept halfway in between, right? But I have a vertical shift. I've got that plus k, and here k is negative 3, which means the midline is down at 3. Sorry, negative 3. 
right here. So whereas normally the graph would have gone through 0, 0, it's moving down, a vertical shift down, 3, and now that middle point goes through 0, negative 3. One second, I'm making a video. Oh, class is, oh, class is about to start. I didn't time this right. Okay, well, let's finish up. Um, normally, so let's see, this is my midline. I can do a dotted line if I want. Oh my gosh, announcements. There's Pam making a cameo in the video. All right. Um, first quarter is going to be, you know what? We'll finish this one in class. All right, everybody. Here are the problems you need to do for homework. I'll project them. Page 623, number 9 and 11. You're supposed to graph the sine and cosine function. And good news is this one doesn't have a tangent function, so we can finish that in class. Number 9, y equals sine of x plus 3. And number 11, y equals 2 cosine of x plus 1. All right, I'll see you in class.